Today's video is not by popular demand. How many of you have ever seen a woman with pencil thin eyebrows or even removed all of her eyebrow hair and then drawn on what she thought to be perfect? Today I'm gonna give you nine reasons why God fearing set apart women should leave makeup and cosmetics alone. Let's talk about it. Glory to the Most High, Yah Shalom. Thank you for tuning in to another Righteous Spirit Food episode. Today I'm back at it in them trenches, handling that kingdom business. Man, today we're talking about a very controversial topic that oftentimes women don't wanna address. You know, there's this new trend of women teachers in the church, and this is a topic that they don't teach about. You know, the Most High, Yah is very particular about who will be in a authoritative role of teaching and in leadership in the church. And oftentimes we see these female pastors, you know, tickle the ears of women and they get very little truth. Before I dive off into this topic, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, turn your notifications on and check out my discount codes in the description box. Man, the Most High Yah is very clear, plain and direct in his instructions and giving guidance as to what is set apart. And when we talk about makeup, we talk about uh, cosmetics. Today I'm gonna give you nine reasons on why God-fearing women should avoid messing with this stuff. You know, oftentimes women try to fight back on this topic without having any historical, you know, reference or facts or truth. And today I'm gonna give you that. Reason number one, you know, when we're talking about especially eyebrows, I've done other videos on makeup and things like that before, but today, you know, I wanna focus you on eyebrows because this is a current trend and to be set apart means not to be following the ways of the world. And this is something that women love to do, even women that claim to be godly, you know, women, women that claim to fear the most high Yah, you know, they have this thing and it's almost borderline like a disorder to pretty much have beautiful natural eyebrows and then pluck them and edge them to the point where you have nothing left and then draw them back on to what you call perfection. That's crazy. The ancient Egyptian eyebrows. Both Egyptian men and women wore makeup for its supernatural powers. As in homage to the god Horus, heavily lined eyes were the focal point of the face, which meant that the eyebrows needed to be equally as prominent. They darkened arch and elongated brows by painting on carbon and black oxide substances. So there you see that this comes from Egyptian culture and then it's rooted in idolatry. Thou shalt have no other gods than me. We see that this was done on behalf of the Egyptian god Horus. The pure ancient and Greeks. The ancient Greeks put an emphasis on purity and it was reflected in women's beauty rituals, okay? External rituals. Oftentimes married women would sport a natural look while those who were unwed would touch up their eyebrows with black incense. A unibrow was recognized as a beautiful trait. The astute of ancient Romans. Roman women had more freedom in their beauty practice than the Greeks, but the no fuss unibrow was still considered the most desirable characteristic. It was a sign of intelligence and worn by the most notoriously beautiful women of that time. So when we look at where this comes from, this comes from Egyptian, Roman, and Greek culture. Reason number two, you need to leave this alone. In the book of Enoch, chapter eight, we see that the fallen angels taught women about cosmetics, how to paint their face, you know, these tinctures, the beautifying, the vein beautifying of the face and external adorning. When it came to wearing these jewel, all of this jewelry and stuff like that, it was the fallen angels that taught women how to do this. And there's a reason that you should stay away from it because the fallen angels were unrighteous. They fell away from righteousness, from godliness, from holiness. Reason number three, 2 Kings chapter nine, verse 30. And when Jehu came to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it 
and she painted her face and tired her head and looked out the window. When it says tired her head, that means adorned her head. So what did she do? She did something very deceptive and manipulative to try to avoid the judgment that she was facing. This is reason number three why women need to stay away from this stuff. Number four, Leviticus chapter 18, verse three through five. After the doings of the land of Egypt, where you dwelt, shall you not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I bring you, shall you not do. Neither shall you walk in their ordinances. You shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgment, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. So right there, the Most High Yah is given a instruction. Do not follow the same way of the Egyptians. He's telling you, I have my set apart rules, statutes, laws, and commandments follow them. Reason number five, Ecclesiasticus chapter 26, verse 29. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and her eyelids. Says a lot about you as a woman when you're doing this deceptive stuff. You, you think about Jezebel, you shouldn't want to be associated with anything pertaining to unrighteousness that Jezebel was partaking in. And part of that was you know, the cosmetics, the facial tinctures, the external adorning, the deceptiveness, the manipulation, the whoredoms of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and her eyelids. Reason number six, Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord is to be praised. When we look at the word vain, vain, that word is Hebrew word 1892, and it means empty, a state of emptiness. Reason number seven, 1 Peter chapter three, verses three through four. Who's adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of plaiting of the hair and of wearing gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is a great price. So when you see this being addressed, he's telling you to not adorn yourself externally as a woman. OK, when you think about Egyptian culture, they were very vain in their customs, their practices and their rituals. Women were known for their lavish hairstyles, you know, in the Egyptian and Roman and Greek culture. And the Most High Yah is telling us not to follow their ways. One thing about external adorning is when you're doing this and it's vain and beauty, you are attracting people to your external appearance and not the righteousness in you. Reason number eight, Romans chapter 12, verse two. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The Most High Yah tells you that throughout his word, what his will is, either as a woman, you're gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do because everybody else is doing it. It's a social norm, it's a trend, but he's telling you in the word, do not be conformed to this world. All of this cosmetics and shaping of the eyebrows and doing all this stuff and drawing wings off of your eyelids and all of that is conforming to the trends of the world. Shout out to all of the set apart natural daughters of Zion that have set themselves apart from this foolishness, from this deceit, from this wickedness. Reason number nine and the final reason, Isaiah chapter three, verse 16, Moreover, the Lord say, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and make and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore, the Lord will smite a scab, the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret part. So your transgressions are going to be known. The Most High Yah is very clear on this topic, but when we see the modern woman fighting for things that the Most High Yah told you to stay away from. He didn't want people attracted to your doggone external features. He wanted the righteous to be able to see the righteousness in you, to be able to see the light in you. And oftentimes by you putting on this stuff, having this desire and this obsession with doing transformations where you look completely different or pretty much uh, trimming and edging and plucking all of your eyebrow hairs off, only to doggone draw them back on and look crazy and to move in this world like nobody knows that that's not doggone 
uh, face paint and color pencils that you've put on your face. Like I said, I wanna commend the set apart Daughters of Zion that don't partake in this. Maybe you've been delivered out of this, but for the women that you know are still doing this and think it's not deceit, I want you to realize that you probably are a lot closer to the lichen in the vein of Jezebel than you think. And you're probably masquerading around as if you're godly. You got an image of godliness, but you deny the true power of. Closer to y'all ministries, kicking a gun barrel straight.